Welcome back to Heart of Glass, the podcast. My name is Ashley Cohn, and I am very happy to welcome you to the show that takes a deeper, more in-depth look at the humans who make up the heartbeat of the Glass City. We are filming at Toledo Spirits, who's one of our sponsors. And if you haven't had a chance yet to try out their Heart of Glass vodka, I would highly encourage it. It basically tastes like strawberry jam, and it mixes well with a lot of things. And as our very first guest, Big C, said, it's so smooth, you can feel it. Today's guest started Guy in the 419 as nothing more than a fun hobby in November of 2016. As he began discovering more local businesses, meeting the owners and staff, and experiencing fun events, this hobby became his passion. By August of 2017, with the support of his family, he launched Guy in the 419 as his full-time career. He has dedicated himself to exploring everything Northwest Ohio has to offer, and he eagerly shares those experiences with the people who follow him on social media. I'm excited to get to know him better and learn who the guy in the 419 is below the surface. So Glass City Humans, I give you Mr. Patrick McCarty. Hello. How you doing, Pat? <laughs> I'm doing great. Good. So I kind of want to reiterate this little pre-conversation that we had before yeah. things started. You said this feels really weird for you this because you're different. normally the guy in this seat. Yeah. Yeah. Feels I'm weird. I'm usually the driver. <laughs> <That's> not, <laughs> well, buckle being up. Being the passenger is, is, is a, it's a different feel. I don't know, so yeah. are you ready to be the passenger today? I'm ready. You I'm ready? Fully, I you fully got accepted this? it, yes. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make this a painless process okay. for All you. Right. All right. <laughs> it's it's tough because I don't, I I am very shy when it comes to talking about myself. Okay. I'll talk about anybody and everybody. All right. All day long. Yeah. But when it comes to, when the spotlight turns to me, it's like, oh, wait, yeah. I got to talk about me? Oh. That kind of makes sense though, that you would have started the nature of what guy in the 419 is because it is... 100% shining the light away from you and on other people. And Always. so your shyness in that, I kind of feel like is a superpower because it kind of amplifies your desire to shine the light on other people. If you go onto my page, it's, you know, my, it's Guy in the 419, not Pat in the 419. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, my logo has, it's not me at all. I have no pictures of me as my profile picture or anything. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the whole, the whole purpose of everything with Guy in the 419 is, is it is devotion to other people. That's awesome. That's I can the, totally yeah. see that with you. So your very first and primary descriptor that you gave me when you gave me your story was that you're a performer. Yeah. And after reading your story, I can totally see why, because it seems like performer and performance is woven throughout the course of your entire <laughs> life. So what is it about performing that you love so much and, and what made you feel that draw towards being a performer? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, what perf being a performer, it, 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 I, I come by it naturally. You know, my father, he's a performer as well. Um, but it's it's when I, when I look at all the different things that they do, I dabble in a bunch. I've had people say to me like, "Wow, you do a lot of different." Because I, I I host trivia, I um, I DJ, not D I DJ. I press play on iTunes. It's a it's a slap in the face to call myself a D slap in the face to DJs to call myself a DJ. Um, you curate musical I, experiences for people. Yes, I like that. There you go. I love that. <laughs> um, but ultimately, it's it's and, and, and being on a microphone. Um, you know, I'm the the MC for Pizza Palooza, and uh, so I'm you know up there on the microphone in front of thousands of people, and I love it. And I, it's um, it's the thrill that comes with it. You know, it's that you get that nervous feeling before you go out there. Yeah. You know, and you. Um, but it's it all started when it when it. When it all started was way back, I was in sixth grade. And um, did that just take a picture or did it? Oh, okay. <laughs> way back in sixth grade. Sorry, I'll try not to be distracted. No, you're good, you're good. Things are going on. Um, you're gonna hear it throughout, just I so you was, know. Okay, so I was, um, I, we saw a performance. You may know, you may have heard of this singer around the area, Chris Knopp. Uh, he and his sister were both in the Children's Theater Workshop. Oh, okay. And we went to go see a play that they were in. We saw, I saw his sister Sarah in Pinocchio. And I just was like, oh, that'd be kind of fun. And so my mom signed me up and I, it came down to it. It came down to the week of, uh, like the day of, uh, to go into the first class over at Children's Theater Workshop. And I chickened out, I didn't want to do it. I was like, oh, I'm gonna stay home, you know? I wasn't a popular kid in grade school, by, by any means. Um, so I was you know, nervous about being in front of a, another group of kids that would make fun of me. Sure, right? that makes a lot you know? of sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like why, you know. It's kind of like you're opening yourself up yeah. to it. Yeah. And so my my parents' friend, Karen Knapp, Chris's mom, uh, she 
called and was in, and talked to me on the phone. And she said, I want you to just to go to one class. Just do one class, and if you never want to do it again, I'll never say anything about it. So she talked me into it, and I went and had an absolute blast. I mean, it was so fun. The teacher there, Dottie Zimmerman, she uh, made the, the class, we, we just played games the whole time, you know? It was just, we got together and played games, and and here was this brand new group of kids that, um, they weren't judgmental. They weren't, you know, when you're uh, when you're a kid in grade school, uh, if you don't play sports, I feel like you're, you're kind of on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. uh, and and here I was with a bunch of kids that <laughs> didn't play sports, right? Right. They were there, you know, that's why we were all there and, and acting together. Um, and I loved it. And that's really what sparked it for me was was that experience there. And I kept um, I kept it up and I kept uh, performing. I went. I'll never forget the the watching Central's musicals. I went to Central Catholic and watched growing up. My mom taught there, so I would go to their musicals. And I just remember thinking, I'm gonna be on that stage someday. I'm gonna be in a I'm gonna be in a musical. And I'll never forget my freshman year. Um, we we did Guys and Dolls, and I was on the stage. They, they, the the curtains opened up, but they had a scrim down. You know, and I'm stationed on stage. You know, positioned on stage, frozen behind the scrim. And the orchestra starts up, it starts playing. And this rush of emotion came over me. And I thought, oh, I did it, I'm here. I'm in a, I am, I am on stage. And we were at Lourdes, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm in a Central Catholic musical. And it was the coolest feeling. And four years, I did that for four years. Uh, did the plays, the musicals, uh, community, other community theater too, um, today productions. I uh, can see, I can see you light up so much when you talk about it. So I can totally tell that it it does fire you up. And I can yeah. imagine since you didn't generally feel accepted in elementary school, going from that into this environment where you're with other kids who are like you, yeah. it, that had to have been such a validating experience and done a lot to help boost your self-esteem. 100%. I bet. 100%, being, yes, yes. It just felt good, you know, it just felt good to be around, um, you know, like-minded people. You Absolutely. Know, that, that, that kind of that share the same passion and. Yeah, it was invigorating. That's awesome. So you said your mom signed you up for for yes. your first uh, musical at the it children's. Was, it wasn't a musical. It was, it was just, just, just a, a straight, they, they straight did acting play? classes. They oh, did acting okay. classes, ten weeks of acting classes, um, and then they would put on shows. Okay. And, and at that age, sixth grade, you're in the um, the main company, so you know fairy tale kind of shows. Sure. Brave Little Taylor. Yeah. The Twelve Dancing Princesses. All right. All that stuff. So, what role did your parents have in helping to to foster your love for acting and your just to foster your love for creating. Oh, they were, they were, they'd always been supportive. They've always been, um, any, um, any of the shows that we were in, I mean, they were right there. They got involved in the parents club over at, at Central to uh, to help, you know, with the, the shows and everything like that. Um, my dad volunteered backstage um, during a couple of the musicals. So they were just supportive. I mean, just 100% awesome. supportive all the way. Are they creative people themselves? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with Irish music, there's an Irish band that's been around for the past 22 years called Extra Stout. That is awesome. And that's them. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. They've been performing around town at festivals, and they don't really do the bar scene anymore, but um, they used to be out at uh, Manhattan's all the time. OK. Uh, they played out at the Blarney a lot. Um, so yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's they're, awesome. They're they're performers as well. Very cool. So being in High School Musicals, you're a yeah. High School Musical kid. Yeah. Do you have any role specifically that stand out in your head as man? These were my favorite roles that I played. I was, I was Tevia, in the Fiddler on the Roof. Nice. And, that's uh, awesome. Over at uh, Today Productions, you know, and it was just a community theater thing. Today Productions, but it was there were a lot of kids in the cast, um, and man, I remember seeing Fiddler, my. Eighth grade, no, no, sorry, seventh grade year. Um, I saw Fiddler on the Roof when Central did it. Um, and I remember Jay Stricker was, was Tevia, and that was another one that I thought, that's so cool. That is such a cool role. I And I thought in my head, I'm gonna play that role someday. Someday I'm gonna be Tevia. That's and awesome. then junior year, manifestation. That's the, that's, that's the key word. I think that's the, the secret to my success manifestation i'm a big fan of that concept we talk that way with this project all the time tiernan so, my partner in this and yeah. i we talk about that all the time because i think when you start talking like it's it's going to be a reality yeah your likelihood of making that reality just skyrockets i've created a career out of that shouldn't exist <laughs> with what i do like it's 
Um, but no, that's, you know, I remember being a freshman in high school and walking out of a central game, out of one of the football games, and seeing this senior also walking out with one of the uh, cheerleaders. And I just remember looking at him and like we made eye contact, but I remember thinking, that's gonna be me someday. I'm gonna be walking out here. <laughs> and my senior year, my best friend, Kristen Tegley was the head cheerleader. And I remember one night, she and I were walking out of the game together. Um, and I made eye contact with another kid. I went, oh, I did it. It was like all of a sudden it occurred to me. Like it wasn't even like a, like it was, I wasn't trying for it. It just was like all of a sudden it happened. Like, oh my gosh, I'm the guy walking out with one of the cheerleaders right now. <laughs> that was so cool. Like you made it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it was neat, but yeah. Manifestation. Absolutely. You, you, vision, you envision it, you know, you make it happen. You create your reality. Definitely. So outside of Pat, the musical kid yeah. in high school, <laughs> who were you outside of that? Mm. Who was I outside of the music? Well, what's funny is I, I love being in musicals. I loved being on stage. Um, but I didn't, I thought I wanted to be a famous actor. Mm. I, I, I thought, but I was never a musical theater kid. And there's a difference. There's We're going to talk about that here in just a <laughs> little bit. <laughs> okay. There is a difference. Um, and so you talk about, you know, feeling accepted into it. It's like, well, I never, I was always, um, there was never one group that I was, uh, I was a floater, you know, I would, um, I would hang out with this group of people. I would hang out with this group of people. I'd hang out. Um, there wasn't one area that I, that I defined myself as, oh, I am this, you know. Yeah. I'm, I wasn't a jock. I wasn't a, it was terrible. I was never good at sports. Um, I wasn't, um, I wasn't a, I wasn't one of the smart kids. Okay. You know, by any means. I was not a, I, I remember the, the first time I ever brought home my junior year, I brought home all A's and B's on my report card. And it, oh my God, my parents were like through the roof. Yeah. Like, it was incredible. Like it was the most unlikely thing. <laughs> Are you defining your level of intelligence based on test scores? Is that what you're defining it on? Uh, or do you actually believe that about yourself? That. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's well, what we do here. You. It gets you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that in, in high school, they determine your level of intelligence based on test scores. Yes, absolutely. They determine your, um, having taught high school, um, that was one of the issues that I came up against a lot was that um, kids didn't, well, I would have kids say, well, I'm not, I'm not really, a, I'm not, I'm not one of the smart kids. Yeah. Well, I'm not in honors theology. I'm, yeah. a, I'm in, I'm in your theology class, which yeah. is like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> My dad, you're still a lot, you, you're still smart. Um, but no, I think that there's too much emphasis put on grades. Mm -hmm. Too much emphasis put on it. And then, I, I agree. Yeah. And so I don't think that um, people really, uh, somebody's self-worth. So what I say, I, mean, I would say I'm, I, I'd say I'm savvy. I would say I, I'm, I'm, I can, um, I can talk myself out of most any situation. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, there's a level of intelligence. That I see have to, you as being to, an intelligent to, person. To be there. Um, wisdom. I'm always striving for wisdom. Yeah. Not quite there yet, but. You know, you keep striving for that every day. I kind of think nothing shows more wisdom than recognizing that you don't know <laughs> that much. You know what I yeah. mean? That you're not as, as wise as you'd like to be. I think that's that's the true sign of, of someone who who is striving to be that way. Well, and then I'm a little wisdomous, I guess. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I truly do think you're an intelligent person because well, as we talk about Guy in the 419 later, I think in order to execute something like that, sure, savvy is one thing, but I think you genuinely have to be an intelligent person. So. Well, thank you. You're very wow. welcome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so after high school, you went yeah. to Wright State University yes. with the intention to study musical theater. Right. But that ended after a couple years. That ended after... Six months. Oh, six months. So All I, right. Well, I finished out the year. Okay. But after six months, I, I'm, I'll, I'll never forget it. The uh, the one instructor, the one professor was talking about all these different shows that were going on, these performances that were happening in, in Dayton. And we needed to be going out and seeing these shows on a regular basis, and it, which makes sense, right? I mean, if you want to get better at your craft, go and watch people that are professionals that are doing it. Um, and he, he, I remember he kept saying, if you want to be, if you want to be on Broadway, if you want to be in musical theater, you have to do this. And my thought was, 
well, I don't want to be on Broadway. I want to be in, I want to be in Hollywood. I want to be in movies. Yeah. So I raised my hand and I said, what if I don't want to be on Broadway? And he goes, that you're at the wrong school. Was there a gasp in the room when was, you said that? What? <laughs> uh, yeah. It, and and it, that kind of hit me. I thought, oh, all right. Well, maybe I'm at the wrong school then. Because, again, I think my whole life has kind of been a, a, a series of, I don't fit in here, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. it, that, that really kind of uh, has, has influenced a lot of my decisions. Um, but, you know, in the musical theater realm, I, I did not fit in there. And partially, um, it, it came down to, and again, this is no offense to anybody that's in musical theater. Um, I love, I love, I should say love, I still do. I love performing. I love performing on stage. I love musicals. But I couldn't stand musical theater people. Okay, so... And I'm sorry if I offend anybody that's in musical theater, <laughs> but oh my lord. You're speaking from your own personal experience. From my own personal yeah. experience, but lighten up. <laughs> You're supposed to have fun. And I mean, it, it goes without saying, they were so dramatic. <laughs> they were so, oh, this theater is life. Yeah. And like, well, they were really talking like that. They weren't doing the mocking voice like I was. They were really, it was a, it was, you know, theater is life. And um, it, it started to kind of annoy me a little bit. Okay. It, to the point where I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to hang around uh, with them. And then even trying to hang out with them at parties or whatever. I never really felt because I wasn't in any of the, uh, I was in one small performance my freshman year. Um, but I, I don't know. I never really felt connected with any of that group. That makes a lot of sense because that's that's kind of, I've never been in the musical theater realm, yeah. but I've observed it. And it seems like that people that dive into that, that is their whole life. They eat, sleep and breathe it. 100%. And so if for you, that's not where your head was at. That makes total sense yeah. that not only would you not be feeling it, but it would make it hard to connect with the other people. So in your opinion, where do you think the differences between musical theater and other forms of acting divert? And, and other, well, yeah, so my, I just, I, I liked performing. Have you ever, well, it's, it's like cooking, right? I love cooking. I love cooking. Mm -hmm. Would you ever go be chef, go and be a chef at a restaurant? Hell to the no. Right? No. Why? Because uh, that's, I'm not gonna make that my life. Yeah. I love to cook. I'm a, I'm a not put a timer on it kind of thing. That's a, we're gonna go slow and right. steady and have it be a stress relieving thing. And yes. stress so relieving. I love to cook, but I'm not up for the demand that, that that would take. 100%. And I think that's the same, that is the exact same response to my look, outlook on musical theater. Um, you know, I would talk about, oh, I, uh, yeah, I love Phantom of the Opera. And I would kind of get up, huh, okay. Well, you know, like Phantom of the Opera, that's very amateur, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I was like, I'm sorry, I like the show, you know? I enjoyed it. Oh, well, I saw when so-and-so performed it at the such and such place and da-da-da-da, and it was absolutely atrocious the way they did it. I'm like, yeah, I saw that same show. I thought it was pretty good, <laughs> you know? Like, right. I just didn't have the same level of passion for that as, as they did. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that there is a... There are people that just absolutely love it. You're right, and they and they eat, sleep, and breathe it, and that's their whole life. Um, and then there's people like me who just, I just had fun acting on stage. Yeah. You know? Focus on one show, and then later, if another one comes up, I mean, these people were um, one show, and before the show even, you know, went 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 to, to stage, uh, they'd already be looking at the next, you know, year and a half of auditions. Instead of being in the moment and in, enjoying, yeah, I the mean, curve. maybe, but maybe they were, but maybe they were enjoying it, and they just enjoyed it on a different level than I did. Sure, that makes sense. I understand that from the point that I considered being a music major in college, and I decided not to do that because for me, music is such a stress reliever, and I was so concerned about that becoming something that it wasn't. And you can have a musician that that's their entire life, and they want to dive into that and make that their career and teaching and things like that. And then you have people like me who we do enjoy making some money doing it, but, right. and I just, I just love it. And I want it to stay that, that pure stress relieving yes. form for me. I think stress relieving, I think that's the big thing. Yeah. Um, I don't ever want to be, it's like, it's like golf, right? Mm -hmm. So I play, I play golf. Okay. I'm terrible at golf, Okay. but I really am. <laughs> I haven't even, I've never broken a hundred. Um, but I, I don't keep score mostly. I know that I haven't broken 100 because I'm getting a double or triple bogey on every single hole. Right? Okay. 
So I know that I'm not breaking 100, but I'm not keeping score every single time because that just creates stress. Mm -hmm. And if I can just go out and play 18 holes and, and just have fun, well then that's that's great. If I'm paying for it, I don't want to stress about it. Yeah, you know, that if makes I'm putting a lot of money sense. into it, I don't want to stress about something. If you want to put money behind me, fine. I'll stress out all you want me to. Yeah, you know. But if I'm if it's me putting in the money, I just want to enjoy myself. You that, know? So that makes a lot so of sense. I, why would I want to be stressed out about being on stage? That, something that I yeah. absolutely love to do. I would hate to feel stress. That'd be terrible. That would be terrible. <laughs> So you you decided that you were going to part ways with making musical theater a primary focus. Right. And then you decided to pick up and move to Chicago. Yes. And from what you you said, it sounds like you, you experienced a bit of adversity while you were there trying to just maintain. Right. So I have two questions in yes. regard to this. The first one is, what made you decide to pick Chicago and what was it like for you while you were there? Uh, okay. I blame my father. <laughs> Okay. I wanted LA. I was all set. And I and, and, and I would have done it. I would have moved to LA. Okay. And I I'd probably I, who knows what my life would have been if I moved to LA. Um but I had I was young and ambitious. I had that passion, right? I could have done it. I could have been somebody. Could have been a contender. No? You don't know that? I didn't know that. No, no, you know okay. Anyway. I'll send it to you later. You'll then you'll get me like, oh, that's please, please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, so my dad got a hold of a couple of my cousins that lived in Chicago and said, "Hey, Pat wants to move out to L.A. Could you reach out to him and let him know that there's a lot of really good acting, possible, you know, opportunities in Chicago?" So a couple of my cousins called me. Hey, you know, you'd be right here and da da da. And if you ever needed us, we're right there. Da -da. And so rather than taking that great big leap, I kind of went, okay, maybe I need to go with something that's more comfortable. And I, and I, don't get me wrong. I love my life right now. Sure. I'm, I love my family. I love everything right now. But for the rest of my life, I will always have that thought in my head of what if. I get I'll that. always have that now. And so that's, and that's another big thing. That's another reason why. Mo, you know, if an opportunity comes up, I want to take it and run with it. I could totally fail at it. In fact, half of my things have, have, have failed up with Guy in the 409. Um, but at least I'll know. You know, at yeah. least now I know. Yeah. That, okay. Um, but I'll never, I will never know unless after uh, this life somehow we get to see what the uh, the parallel lives look like, you know. And, the, and the great multiverse of, of everything. Maybe, maybe maybe there was a version of me that, that went off to L.A. and became fa a famous actor. Could sure. have been, could have been in the Avengers movies. Who knows? I don't know. You know? Like, I just, but I think about that all the time. I think, what could have been? You know what I think is really cool, though? Hmm. I think it's really normal to have thoughts like that when you, when you think, man, like, I could have been one step away from being here. Right. It's... What I think is very cool is even in having that, you know, what if mentality, it seems like you've taken all that and you're like, man, that doesn't mean that I can't continue to pursue these things. Right. I just have to creatively figure out how to do so. And so I think it's really, really awesome that with, with everything that you experienced with all of that, that you didn't let it get you down. No. You didn't let it yeah. discourage you from continuing to do the thing that you love to do. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly right. And and when I was in Chicago, so yes, what the experience in Chicago is like, uh, it was fun. I had, a, you know, I had a, it was a great experience and I would never, uh, I met some great people out there. I uh, had a lot of fun times. Um, and But it was about, um, it was about in December. I'll never forget, can I tell you the dream that I had? Please do. And I, yeah. I woke up, I, I, I had this dream that um, I was in this like hole, halfway buried in this hole. And below me there's like, it's like bodies and it's like hell and all this stuff. And, all right. And I was like, there, I couldn't get out. Like I wasn't sinking into the hole, but I wasn't going, you know, I wasn't, and I wasn't going anywhere. Interesting. And so I woke up and that, that thought of, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything right now. I was working two jobs just to be able to pay for the, the rent at this, um, at this, this loft. And, and, and again, like I said, it was, it was a very positive experience, but I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't advancing, furthering my life. I was just spinning my wheels. Right? Sure. 
So that's when I made the decision. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move back home, and I'll just, you know, I'll get my my associate's degree over at Owens or something like that. I'll just start taking some some college courses over there. Okay. So that's what made me move back to to Toledo. That's what I was gonna ask. I wondered what would the the final yeah. straw was. That's really interesting. You know, sometimes I think when you have a really vivid dream, it can kind of be like the turning point where it's like a wake up call sure. that tells you, wow, okay. Yeah. So maybe it is time to time to pivot. And it was, I mean, I, you know, I, I, my, I worked in downtown Chicago, so I had this, you know, I had this great experience. I took the, the red line in every single day. Nice. So I had this really very positive experience of downtown Chicago. I mean, I was, you know, it's kind of cool. You know, you're 20, I love you're, Chicago. You're 20 years old and you're surrounded by skyscrapers and you're kind of in the hustle and bustle of life. And yeah. It was great. It was a very, and I would, I would never change that for anything. It was a, it was a really very good experience, but I, but I realized about partway through like, okay, there's something more that I'm supposed to be doing and it's not here. It's not, it's not this. So. Okay. So then you come back here yeah. and you start teaching at the children's theater workshop. Yes. That is a crazy for full circle moment. So what. What did that feel like for you coming back and basically being back where your roots yes. were, were planted? So it was so cool. It was it was a, it was a wonderful. I loved it. Uh, I, I saw my old instructor Dottie Zimmerman, and she asked me. She said, "Do you?" She goes, "Would you want to come back and be a teacher? We need a teacher." I said, "I don't know anything about acting. You know, teaching acting." And she said, "Have you been in a show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you know how to. You know, <laughs> it's easy. So she said, you just you play games with the kids and all this stuff." And, and it was great, yeah, I, I went there, I taught there for, uh, for I think seven years. Um, and I was, so I was, what, uh, 20, 19? I was, ni was I 19? Yes, okay. I was 19 years old at the time. Wow. That was, um, or 20, I can't remember. It was so long So ago. young. I was young, You were, you were 20, very I was young. maybe 20. Yeah. But, um, but, well, to connect it all then, um, there was a girl that was in the, Teen company. Yeah. Uh, she was 14 years old. Obviously, no romantic interest at all. Um, but the, she dropped out after a while. Um, and then years down the road, through social media, we reconnected and started talking. And um, that wow. woman is now my wife and the mother of my four children. Wow. So, okay. So you guys connected basically both as, as young adults. Yeah. Teenager, young adult. Yeah. So then... How did you guys reconnect? It was just it was just through Facebook. We, okay. she, I, she had friend request me on Facebook, and you know, you, on Facebook you have tons of friends or whatever. And um, one night we or she had said um, she had a dream one time that we were, or I had a dream that we were fugitives on the on the lamb. I can't <laughs> I can't remember if she dreamt it or I did, but um, we said hey, she's. I think she invited me out for coffee. Oh, let's go get some coffee. And I was like, oh, okay, here's this, you know, little, little yeah. girl for, you know. And so we said, we went to, to Big B, or was it Big B at the time? Yeah, it was Big B at the time. It's now um, Sip. And, um, and even when we were leaving, you know, I gave her the old, you know, side hug, like, well, see you later, kiddo, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but she was 18 at that time. She was 18 and she was in college. And still there was no romantic interest. Um, I was kind of seeing a girl. I... Okay, this is what I always told my students. I I graduated from high school in 2001. I graduated from college in 2010. And I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so there were yeah. a lot of wasted years in there. So I always told, caution to my students, you know, be careful, my high school students, not the acting students. Be careful when you get into college. You know, mm -hmm. if you're gonna go to college, go to college with purpose, but don't get lost. It's very easy to get lost in the, you know. Can I ask the, you a question? The, yeah. Why do you consider them to be wasted years? Oh, and, and I know, I know there's the whole, you know, you learn things. No right or like wrong that. answers. No right or wrong um, answers. Because there were, there were, um, I didn't do things. I, there were, there were things that I could have done. You know, I look at the, the, what, I look at what I had back then. I could have done things. I could have walked part of the Appalachian Trail. I could have, yeah. uh, gone, you know, I could have, uh, volunteered a year with, um, uh, uh, what's the what's the America group the that helps you know overseas and stuff like that? I could have done some kind of service. Okay. I could have done something that would have given me uh, purpose. Would have given me good experiences. Would have been, and instead, what it was was a lot of drinking. Okay. And a All lot right. of a lot of 
a lot of drinking, a lot of mistakes, a lot of poor choices. Okay. Um, again, but but on the flip side, you can never really say that any of those are wasted or bad because yeah. you, you learn something from them, right? I, under- I, I understand but, but what yeah, you're but, saying. But I'm thinking yeah. there, there could have been there could have been more positive things I did yeah. in, in that time. And we, um, I, I got to a point, uh, I got to a point where I, I, I knew that I needed to change. You know, I was looking at my, my friends were um, moving away, getting married, yeah. having successful careers. Um, and I kind of looked around my life one point and I, I thought, I, I don't have any, a great friend group here. Um, I was in and out of lousy jobs um, I was in it and, and for me, like, there's no reason why I couldn't have had a good career. I just wasn't driven. Um, I was in and out of, of lousy relationships. Um, and I, I, there was, I finally was like, I need to get myself back on the straight and narrow. Okay. I need to, I need to surround myself with positive people. And so, um, you know, I, I wanted to, uh, I went to back to UT in 2007. Yes. Went to UT, but even then I didn't have the drive. And so after the first semester at, at the University of Toledo, I was failing out. Okay. I had a 1.9 GPA. Um, it was, so I couldn't get financial aid. Um, the following semester, um, I could only afford to take one class. So I, there was one class that I took, uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, cause that, yeah. that's the class that changed, yes. that changed everything. Um, but I started, I started, uh, the, the best thing I think I could have done there was I started, um, hanging out with the, the group, the Catholic student association. Um, and I start, so I started hanging out with people that were driven, right? People that had this ambition that, Hey, we're in school because we intend to graduate in the next few years. Right. Um, so I started surrounding myself with those people and, um, things started slowly shifting for me, but I, what there, I was dating a girl who, who I found out she was using Coke and whatever to each their own. People want to, I'm, I'm not going to judge you, but for myself, I knew that I could not, Sure. I couldn't go down that, that road. That it wasn't a healthy environment for Exactly you to be right. In. I couldn't go down that road with her. Um, so I ended things with her and I just thought I need to find a good, a girl with good morals. And we went to, I went with this group, the Catholic Student Association. We went out to this um, thing called a FOP. It's called Festival of Praise big Christian music thing out in uh, the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And while I was out there, I, I met this girl named Mary. I don't know. She was a very sweet girl. So we started talking and uh, started talking on the phone and we started dating um, very temporarily. And she's now a nun. Okay. So I kind of <laughs> overshot the green on that one. Uh, it's like, oh. Let's pull it back a little bit. I, I <laughs> admire I much. admire what you were working after, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. And then it was uh, not too long after that, I was I was, I was was DJing, providing music for, what did you say? You were a, a curator musical of a musical experience, experience for, yeah. this, for Highland Elementary. And my wife took her, her sister, her sister was in fifth grade. Her mom was working, so she took her there. And there was just something different about them, kind of going back and forth in the timeline here. That's okay. But there was something different about her that night that I saw, and it was because I was in a better place where I was. So I always tell people, I somewhere between a cokehead and a nun, that's my <laughs> wife, <laughs> right? Right in the sweet spot. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we, um, what changed for me though was the fact that I could only take one class. The one class my mother suggested it for me because she really admired the, the professor, uh, Professor Rick Lardy. And it was Christian ethical perspectives. That's right? what I wondered because thinking about musical theater and making yeah. that a focus, that is such a massive shift <laughs> right. it's just in in field of study. Yes. Completely. Oh, yeah. Completely. Yes. Completely different. Um, but I took this and, and the first class I was like, wow, that was really interesting. And it wasn't so much the field of study that caught my eye. It was him. It was his uh, delivery and the passion that he had for teaching the stuff by the third class. I went, all right, I'm changing my major. I went, changed my major from communications to religious studies. Um, and all then boom, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm kind of on the right path. I started gaining new friendships 
from this group that are still friendships today. Uh, my one friend just got married last week. I was in his wedding. He's the godfather of my child. So some really fantastic nice. friendships that start up there. Um, I, I had a job. It wasn't my career job, but it was a steady job that I was able to hold down and make money. Right, and it was a, I was a third shift security guard. And whatever, right? It yeah. got me through school and I was able, so, and then I started dating. So now I was in this meaningful relationship, which after a month and a half, I knew I'm marrying this girl. Um, and uh, so things were just shifting. Things, all this stuff was shifting. And again, it was that manifestation. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one, can I tell you one of the big things that my mom really put me in my place. Please do, yeah. It was back in December. And because I was was like, I can't, I'm trying to find a good girl. I'm trying to find somebody, you know, a decent girl to date. And she said, take a look at your life. You're out of shape. You drink a lot. You can't hold down a job and you're in and out of school. You're failing out of school. Would you date a girl like that? Damn, mom dropping truth bombs. Wow, that. That was a huge, that was a huge thing that kind of kicked my butt into gear. And so, yeah, so from that point, then that's, that was one, that was kind of the ignition that started to make me say, okay, I need to, I need to change some things. I need to turn some things around in my life. I had already had coffee with her. The connection wasn't right there, right? Apparently for her it was, she was, you know, but okay. for me, I was like, I wasn't in the right place. Then it was it was March of that uh, of that year, just within three months. So I changed my major. Things were going really well, and that's when I saw her and I thought there's something different about her. <laughs> it wasn't. There was nothing different about her. It was something different about me. I was I I was I was on the path to becoming the person that was worthy of her. Isn't that amazing how when you start doing work on yourself, how it can literally shift your perspective on how you see other people? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. You you gain that, you get your self-confidence back. Definitely. You know, when you, you know, I'm not by any means, I mean, I'm not in the shape that I want to be. You know, I'd love to, uh, love to shed a few pounds, but, um, but I'm, I, I, I'm comfortable enough with myself that it doesn't, sure. it doesn't get me down. You know, yeah. So there's still there's still there's still a lot of improvement as myself, but but I but yeah. So a, a big thing was uh, the comment from my mother and just yeah making those small changes. I think a good thing for all of us to remember is even when we feel like we're doing really really well, there's always room for growth and yeah. always room for improvement. It doesn't mean that where you are currently that there's anything wrong with that. But right. but I mean we can we can all always be stepping up there's our game. All, you should you should always work to, to yeah. improve in some way to improve. No, you, I don't think we've ever, we'll ever reach that that threshold. But I, you know, I went from having a 1.9 GPA, in and out of jobs, no friendships. All that changed. I graduated with a 3.0. That's awesome. A couple years later, that's, that's it was a like, massive improvement. Yeah. Seriously, it's a, it's amazing it felt, when you have the drive there. Right. How that makes a huge difference. I think sometimes it's finding the thing, yeah. finding the thing that really piques your interest. Because I think for some people, some people don't just have that innate. Even if I'm not interested in it, I'm going to throw everything I have into it. Most people are wired to if they don't care about it, it's really hard to get into right. it. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, and that's and that's it, so. It's it's again. It comes down to performing. Um, it was you know the 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 topic of theology fascinates me, but it was it was really his passion and his performance and teaching yeah. that I thought that's what I want to do. I want to. I had this vision in my head. I want to stand. I, I told my dad this one time. I said I want to be able to. I don't know what I want to do. All I can see myself doing is standing in front of a group talking to people. Okay. That's what I saw. That was my vision that I. Okay. That I saw. And so at the time when you were focusing on theology and religious yeah. studies, did you see that as a vehicle for that? Yes, 100%. I thought, yeah, I'm going to teach theology. My, at that point, I thought maybe I would go on to get a master's degree um, and, and, and you know, kind of take my life that way. Um, but, you know, as things do, they, they change. And, they do. But, it was, but I had five really solid years. I was uh, my, right, out of co right out of college. I was uh, worked for a company called... Um, uh, Lynn care. They sell oxygen units and stuff like that. So going into doctors' offices, yeah. and talking to doctors, that was my that was my shtick for a year. Um, but I was not placed in a good center. Uh, the, it, it was placed in a failing center. Um, it was a great it's a great company that center. And just unfortunately, they're not even around anymore. 
Um, the manager that had hired me. Yeah. By the time I got down there two weeks later, he had been fired. Um, Ooh, the woman rough. that they brought in to uh, be the manager had had never been in a position like that before. Yeah. I think she was the manager at a like a clothing store. And it's like, well, this is very different. Um, so she, I don't think she was the most qualified to, to do that. And so it was just a very tough work environment. And they they had actually, they cost me a really big account. Her, the, her and this, the respiratory therapist that were there. Um, and I was furious. I remember sitting in the parking lot and driving to work that morning. And I'm just like, I, I don't even want to go in. I don't want to, I can't face them because they they had lied to me for several months that mm. I found out. And I got a call from Kim Sofo from St. Ursula. And she said, hey, your, your name came up on file. We have a position in the fall for a theology teacher. She said, I understand you're, you're living out of town now. Would you be able to do a, uh, a phone interview at one o'clock today? And I said, I'll see you in person. And I pulled out of the park. I didn't even go inside. I just pulled out of the parking lot, drove straight up to Toledo. That's awesome. Because it was down in Dayton. Sorry, okay. I should have said that. It was in Dayton. Uh, and drove up and, and got there for the interview and got the job. Found out a week That's later, amazing. got the job. So then my wife and I, we were pregnant with our first. So we moved back up to Toledo. Okay. Came back to the area. So think, just thinking about you studying theology, Ian, yeah. why, does, why is theology so interesting to you? Because it drives people. I mean, it's, mm. it influences... Um, for for positive or negative, it it changes uh, the way people act. It changes the way people act towards you. Um, it changes the way that you look at somebody else. Um, and I think that the study of the education of theology would solve so many problems. I think we have in this world. Hmm. Um, we we fear what we don't understand. Yeah, right. I agree. If you don't understand something. You don't understand why somebody dresses a certain way, why they worship a certain way, mm -hmm. why they worship at all, um, who they're worshiping, what they're, you know, if you don't understand that, the, it, it creates almost a level of, I don't get it and I don't like what I don't understand. Mm. And so there's this, whether they act on it or not, there's this, mm, I don't like that. And so they kind of keep their distance yeah. or if they're that kind of person, they'll be flat out, you know. Um, and so to to study theology, to, to understand, and I always I have never been one to say um, that this this is right and yeah. this is wrong. When you when you're when you study theology and you're and world religions, that's what I taught at at St. John's. Um, I loved that we spent maybe a total of a, a one week out of the entire semester talking about Catholicism. Yeah, because they've already had twelve you know twelve sure. years of that. Why do they need more of that? No, let's focus on. Let's focus on the world religions. Let's focus on, you know, um, what do other people believe? Um, so in your studies, yeah. did you notice that there is a lot more crossover between the different religions sure. and and how they operate and really who they worship than a lot, what a lot of people would actually realize? Right. There's a, there's a common thread that is, in, is woven within every single religion within every single spiritual practice, every single one of them has one single common thread. Mm -hmm. And that's love. Absolutely. Every single one of them. Now, unfortunately, uh, we as humans, we're, we're flawed, right? Mm -hmm. And power corrupts. And when somebody sees an opportunity to control, to manip you know, they, to, to have power, they will use whatever vehicle is being used and they'll manipulate it to their, you know. And so I think one of the big problems that, especially, you know, I'm, I'm a Catholic. I think that a lot of um, a lot of problems that people see with the Catholic Church comes from that manipulation, that abuse of power. Sure. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's what people focus on. Mm -hmm. And they'll focus on all of the negative and all of the... Uh, and, and then when that happens, you miss the beauty that comes from, um, you know, a group of, of strangers that gather every week uh, downtown and they just bring food and clothing and other things, you know, toiletries and other necessities. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, that's that's Christianity right there. They're yeah. doing it, you know, because they've been raised uh, in, a, in a 
Christian household. That's just, you know, what they believe is right to do. Honestly, when the, lo in my personal opinion, when the love gets pulled out of it, yeah, I don't care what religion you practice, what, what vein of spirituality you subscribe to. I think when the love is, is pulled out of it, that's where all the problems yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly. 100%. Um, but if you look at, you know, you look at any of the Judeo-Christian religions, you look at, um, uh, uh, you know, you look at, uh, you know, even in the Eastern thought, you know, Hinduism and mm -hmm. Shinto and all this, it's, um, it's it, the philosophies, you know, that there, there is that one and it's, it's, it's love. You, you yeah. call it mutual respect, you call it whatever you want. But there's, it's, it, it is, it is love. That's, that is at its base. That's, that's what every religion. Definitely. Is. That's the one thread that goes through all of them. So you, you take this job. Yeah. Was this the job that you referred to in your story that you took in 2016? That a couple months later? No. Okay. No, no. Cause I had, I had the. So oh, this is prior, is this prior oh, to this, that? Oh, oh the, the, the Lynn care job. Yeah. That I, no, that I had for a full year. Okay. And then I, I had that for a full year and then I, um, then we moved back. And I taught at St. Ursula for a year, and it was absolutely wonderful. I'll, I'll never forget one day I was driving down. I turned onto Indian Road. It was November 4th, and I was driving down. It was a Tuesday morning, I believe. And I don't know if it was the way the sun was hitting the leaves. Just right. It's a beautiful fall morning. And I just remember this thought came over to my head, which was, this is my job. This is what I get to do, you know? <laughs> and I and I did. I, I, loved, I loved being there. Unfortunately, the it was it came down to um, money. Okay. And it came down. We were we were pregnant with our first. My daughter Julia was born in, in December, and to have my wife and daughter on my health care plan would cost five hundred and thirty four dollars per pay, per wow. pay, not even a month. So we're talking over a thousand dollars a month. It's like that's crazy. I can't yeah, afford that's, that. Yeah, that's that's steep. And so. Um, after the school year ended, I got a call from St. John's and they asked me, and I didn't want to because I didn't want to leave St. Ursula. I loved it. Um, but they, I, I decided to go in an interview and the one question was basically, what's your healthcare plan look like? Like, because if, if it's the same thing, then, then why, then why change, sure. why change schools? But they showed it to me and it, my heart sank. I thought, shoot. Okay. Was it that good? It was very good. It was a very good plan, and so I couldn't afford not to do it. So I, I called the principal and I said, "Look, you know, I have to do this for my family. Um, thank you for the great experience." And you know, um, it actually ended up working out great because through my leaving, um, there was this one woman was going to lose her job because it couldn't fit her in anymore. Yeah. But by me leaving, it opened up a spot in this place. They they did a, a kind of shuffle, and she got to keep her job. So it was like. All right, that worked out for everybody then. Yeah. By me yeah. leaving, she got to keep her job. Isn't, like, that, isn't that crazy the way the universe yeah. works like that so sometimes? I thought, okay, that, that made me yeah. feel like, okay, maybe, you know. Um, and then I had, four, I had four great years at St. John's. I, I absolutely loved teaching there, uh, taught seniors. So I went from teaching freshman girls to senior boys. Okay. And uh, that was a that was definitely a, a transition. Very okay. different. Um, but I loved it. It was That's a, awesome. it was a great time. I, I had thoroughly enjoyed my years there. That's wonderful. So then, flashing forward a little yeah. bit, let's talk about that defining moment that led you to begin your journey. That is guy in the four one nine. Okay. So, well, I left again. I, everything I do, I do for my family. So yeah. I was at a job that was was great. It didn't pay a whole lot, you know. Um, but I but it was it was we were doing okay. Um, my wife was watching kids at our house. And I remember coming home one day and she was just fried, you mm. know, just being around all these kids. We had three of our own at that point. So the house is full of these little kids. And by the time the last kid got picked up, she just didn't want to be around kids anymore. Even our kids. That makes sense. Which makes sense, but that's terrible, right? That's a terrible, she, so I, I just thought, okay, all right, I need to, I need to take a job that's going to make more money so that she doesn't have to watch kids in the house anymore. So I started looking around. I even looked at selling cars because you know, I thought, boy, if I could sell enough cars, that, I could make a sure could make a decent money doing that. Um, and I got an interview with the, with a company, with an insurance company. They're they're located out in Parisburg, um, and it was to be this. Uh, the, the, it was a new position created, and I it was 
they were looking for somebody that has teaching experience and is a performer. How crazy is that? Uh, like, <laughs> wow! Like, talk about the universe. Like Taylor made for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And I thought, and they, and they said, this is your starting pay. This is where you'll be in a year. And then through this, this, and this, here's where you'll be at in five years. And it was like, oh my gosh. Like double what I was making as a teacher. This is incredible. That's, wow. I mean, I just thought, this is, I know I'm on the right path because this just is it and it feels right. And I was fired in two months. <laughs> that is terrible. Okay, so let me ask you this. Yeah. So, so much build up to this. Yes. And you think, man, this is the thing that is gonna be the caveat for me being able to provide for my family in the way that I want to and, and tells me that I'm on the right track. So that flames out two months later. Two months. <laughs> how did you feel with all that? It's like a failure. Oh, like an I bet. absolute, like an absolute failure. Um, I was sick. I mean, I cried. I cried. I bet. I, got, I went out to my car, sat in my car and just screamed. Um, I had no way, I, I felt sick. I thought I was gonna throw up. Um, because what do you do? You know, you have three kids, you're the sole provider. Mm -hmm. And and now all of a sudden it's just taken it away from you. Um, and it was just, oh, I, I, I went I went over, I drove over to St. John's first to talk to my old uh, spiritual director. Um, and he, you know, I was telling him what happened and again, just crying bawling my eyes out and just terrified like i don't know what to do i said i don't even I, I don't even want to tell my wife i don't want to because you know maybe i can find another job before i have to tell her that i got fired from this one and he said absolutely not don't keep anything from her you need to go home and tell her right now so smart man and i yeah and i uh i went in and she was in the kitchen and she looked at me and she <laughs> she uh knew immediately she goes what are you doing home and then knew immediately and uh and I remember we went over to uh, my parents' house that night. <laughs> Has anybody ever done this here? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Tears have been a oh, running theme. Man. It's, I, I just, well, let me pause for a second. Yeah. I appreciate you being so candid. Yeah. And um, one of the things I love about you, you're so passionate and you care so deeply. Oh. And I mean, tears are just, yeah. they're, they're a wonderful, beautiful thing. And it to me, it just shows how deeply <laughs> this impacted you and how much you care about yeah. it. It was, uh, yeah, we were sitting there and um, we were just, we had dinner. My parents invited us over for dinner. And I just remember sitting there and just, and just like this. And I just thought about it and I just started crying. And, you know, my mom came over and she just didn't say anything, just hugged me. It was, it was a beautiful moment, but I felt like a, I felt like a kid again. I felt like a kid that just got, you know, a 14 year old that just got dumped by his girlfriend, you know? That night, makes a lot before, of sense The night before the dance, you know? And, and I just felt like a loser and it was horrible. And, but she was, I mean, she was very comforting. And nobody, you know, neither one of them said anything about, you know, trying to be encouraging or anything like that. They were just there, which I think is so many times in a, in a stressful situation or a bad situation, going to a funeral and you just think, I don't know what I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and you don't have to say anything. There's so much power in just being there. Being you present. Know? You just give the person a hug and that's that's all that's all that needs to happen. You know, there's there's so much because there I think there's so much more that's expressed in just a hug I agree. than there is in any words that could be said. I'm a big so, fan of hugs. I me think too. I think there's so much nonverbal communication of love and support there. Yeah. Um so yeah, so anyway, so I, I, uh, I uh, that was that was that. But a couple days later, I was out at, my dad took me out to lunch and he was at, that's what he, he gave it a couple days. And he says, so, you know, what are you gonna do now? What's your, what's your plan? And I said, well, I said, I, you know, I have my life and health license now. I have that, I said, I could, you know, I could sell insurance or something. And he said, well, what do you like to do? What are your, what are your hobbies? I said, I, I have three kids. I don't have hobbies. <laughs> you know, everything is <laughs> everything I do is is re, it, it revolves around them. And uh, he said, "Well, I, I thought about it." And I said, "All right." I said, "I, I guess there's if there's if there's any hobby that I have. If I if I thought of a funny idea, yeah. like a funny like, skit or something like that, I'd film it and then put it up online for people to see. Still, it's that performing, right? Yeah. And uh, and he said, uh, he said, "Well, do that." And I said, "No." I said, "I." I said, I can't make any money doing that. And he said, don't worry about making money right now. Just do something that 
makes you happy. So I did, it was October 1st, I did my first video, uh, set it up on it, and I was, it was the most awkward thing, talking to a camera, like how awkward is it's that? It's the most awkward who thing you, ever. You know, <laughs> like who am I talking to, no, you know? Uh, but I laid it out there, like I got fired from a job, and it's been a week from hell, and, and you know, but I said, here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, it's still up online, I, you know, I still pull this up. I said, here, you know, I'm going to make a video every day for the next month. I'm just gonna make, and I did. I committed to it. I made some of the dumbest pieces of content that I've ever, because it was just random stuff. Yeah. But I was committed to one a day. I'm gonna put out a video every single day. Um, videos of me playing with the kids, videos of me going out to job interviews, videos of me, you know. One of them was I took my kids out to the new library that they had out in Spain. I took them out there. Um, which was weird because I felt like this is a work day. Should I be working? Should I be looking for a job? And instead I was taking my kids to the library so they could yeah. play in the little kids area. But while I was there, I, I did got my phone out and kind of did a little video, edited together. And about a week later, a friend of mine said, oh yeah, I saw the video you did on the library. That was really cool. We, we went and checked it out. You know, my kids love the kid area. And I thought, then there was all of a sudden there was that, you know, that if, if I was an animation, there'd be a light bulb, you know. But I thought, you saw one of my videos and that encouraged you to go out and, and see it for yourself. So I thought, okay, all right, so what if, instead of just making random videos, what if I made videos about places to go in the area? And I had had the idea years before, and uh, unfortunately I was talked out of it very quickly by somebody saying, Oh, there's people with the blade that already do that. And I went, oh, yeah, you're right. And let it go. Isn't it amazing how like, you can have an idea <laughs> yeah. and you you are very confident it's a good idea, but you can have a single person One. tell you that they don't think it's a good idea yeah. for whatever reason, and that can kill it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so so then I thought, oh, okay. And then it was kind of like, yeah, you know, I've had this before. So, so then I started doing that. I started going out to... Um, different places. One of the first big places I went to was Yogaja Yoga. And yeah. I told them what I was told the, the owner. I said, here's what I'm doing. I would love to maybe participate in one of your classes and film myself doing it. Um, and I think it was aerial yoga that they were doing, which is inside the cloths. And I looked foolish and everything like that. But it made for a fun video. Is this still online? Yes. Can I go it's see all, this? It's all still, I will be checking still there. this out. <laughs> everything's still there. I think all that stuff's on YouTube. All right. Um, and so... Uh, and then they, she gave me the name of uh, Amusa, who opened up Plat 8. Um, and then I was introduced to, this. that's when Sip Coffee was first on opening. Yeah. So I saw Courtney, I met Courtney, and she, you know, talked to her for the first time and did an interview with her. And it just started, the more places I went to, um, I would do a little interview with them. And it was, there was one place that said no. I can't, it was like, really? free advertising, but okay, wow. that's, that's fine. Um, but it was actually uh, so. So it just started taking off more and more. But I, but I, I, I missed a step in there, and that was that. Oh man, maybe I should do this for a living, and or not as a living, as a hobby. I should do direct all my stuff that way. And this wine club that I belonged to over at Kroger, we called ourselves the Wine Club. It was just basically wine samples, and the same people got together all the time. <laughs> and uh, but she was this one woman. I help me. I can't even think of her name now. Um, but she said, I was talking about this, like, hey, I think I'm going to start making, you know, these videos. They're going to do this. And this woman goes, you could call yourself the guy in the 419. And I went, oh, my gosh. And then I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden it was like, it's out there. It's in the universe. Mm -hmm. Somebody's it's gonna, a reality. If, if, I don't, if I don't get there, if I don't get on, online right now and secure that domain <laughs> and that website and everything in the next 10 minutes, <laughs> somebody's going to snag it up. And so I rushed home and I went and I, and I bought the, I bought everything about the domain and all these, you know, and um, except for the website or the, the, the email, I had to get the guy in the 409. It could just be guy in the 409 at Gmail. It had to be the guy because apparently guy in the 409 was already taken by whoever was trying to get the domains. Right? Wow. It was out there. I, so I, uh, so yeah, so I, I, I give the name credit to uh, this woman. That's from awesome. From my wine club. She, and so I, I went out and uh, yeah, started doing all this and so under the name guy in the 419 i have a question for you yeah when you first birthed this idea mm -hmm. and got it going and saw wow this has traction thinking about then and thinking about now flashing forward to now did you have any idea in your head that 
guy in the 419 would be what it is now. Yeah, not even a chance, not even close. Um, I was a dog chasing cars. I had no idea. I still am. I don't, and this is where I, there are some, some more savvy business minded people mm -hmm. that, that see what I have and think, oh my gosh, you're sitting on a gold mine. You're not using it to its fullest potential. And I wish I could see what they see. <laughs> I really do. I almost feel like I need to hire them to like, why don't you just, I'm going to pay you to tell me what to do. You know? Sure. Because apparently I'm not, I, apparently I'm not using it the way that it, the way that it could be used. But no, when I, no, when I first started doing it, it was just a fun hobby. It was, and it was nothing more than that. And I remember in April of 2017, I, I looked at my numbers and I was like, oh my God, I just, I just gained a thousand followers. I have a thousand followers now. Like that's incredible. Like, that's ins there's a thousand people that have liked my, you know, started following my page. That's yeah. That's nuts. I, I never would have thought. And then um, it was in June. Uh, I got an email from somebody that said, "Hey, I saw your video on this. I really liked it. How much would it cost to come out and do a video on this?" Wow. And I thought, "You want to pay me for this? <laughs> <laughs> you what?" <laughs> um, and by that point, it was up to about we were getting close to like four thousand, five thousand. And, um, but that's in, and, and, and my one very business savvy minded friend, uh, he's the one that, um, got together with me one time. He said, Pat, you got to stop doing this for free. You have got to start charging people. I said, you're getting a following people. You need to start charging for this. This, this could be a career. Um, at, I was working with mass mutual at the time. And so, uh, in August of, of 2017, I was doing both about 50% operating okay. both about 50%. And I thought, okay. I can't do that. I, I, I need to do one or the other because I got to operate one at 100%. So what's it going to be? Both are a risk. Anybody that's in the financial field knows that it's that's a, a risky. Risk. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so they're both a risk. Um, but ultimately, which one would I enjoy? Which one did I actually have a passion for? And without a doubt, that's guy in the, guy 419. In the So I left Mass Mutual and I just decided... I, and I told my wife, I said, I'm fully going into it. I'm fully doing it. This is, and um, she just, she's always been very supportive. And um, yeah, and so I just started, I mean, and then that's, and I think that's really one of the, the ways that I've had success. I think one of the reasons I've had success, one of the reasons, there's been a, there's another one that I think is pretty, we talked about it at the beginning, that mm -hmm. is make it about other people. Definitely. If you make it about yourself, you won't succeed. Um, and I think that way about, nearly every business you make it about others um i think that's when when we had kind of a casual conversation when we initially discussed yeah. what we were trying to do with this um some of the stuff that you told me stuck in my brain and i thought it would they were just amazing pieces of advice the the biggest thing that stuck out was you said what's the difference between a person that that does a podcast and a person that doesn't do a podcast said one of them actually does it and, and the it. other one just sits and talks about exactly it. Exactly right. And I, I, in that conversation, you also said, if you make it about other people, it will succeed. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's rung true in our heads this entire time. Yeah. So you definitely have the heart and you have the savvy. And I think for you, I think you can have somebody who is the, the most savvy business minded person ever, but will have a venture fail because they don't have the heart with it. Right. You've got both going on, well, and thanks. that's a really big thing. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so leaning into your what I consider to be expertise on what's going on in our city. Yeah. If you were to have someone who is coming to our city for the very first time, what would you recommend that they do, and where would you recommend that they go to have the perfect day in the Glass City? Ooh, wow. Well, there's so many cool things to see. There's so many, you know, there are so many. Uh, um, you know, show people the what it, what the city really looks like. Take them out on one of the the cruise lines that goes up and down the river, right? Um, take them to if you really want them to see. If we're talking about Toledo, um, then you know, take them out to um, the Heights. You know, have a cocktail up at the Heights and look out over the city. And it's like it's cool. It's like when you look at it from a distance. I remember when I came back to visit one time from Chicago, and the. Uh, I just, I saw our skyline. I thought, oh, that's so small <laughs> comparatively, right? Chicago's <laughs> huge. Um, but it really is beautiful. The it, city it looks is beautiful, beautiful. Up there. And um, so, oh boy, a day? Yeah, a day. A day. Okay. All right. What day? 
Let's, okay, let's say a Saturday. A Saturday. If you were coming here to visit for the weekend and it was a Saturday, let's start from breakfast. Where would you send them? Ooh, boy. Ooh, I like these questions. These are good, okay. <laughs> a great breakfast. I'll tell you what, um, it, it, it I, well, what I would do is I'd have to narrow it down. I'd have to say, what do you like to eat? Yeah. What do you like to eat for breakfast? Yeah. Because if somebody says, um, oh man, I, I like a really good omelet. Yeah. Okay, well, I know that, um, I know that Grumpy's in Sylvania does a fantastic omelet. They take all their salads that they have and they can dump it all into an omelet. Yes. It's great, right? Um, but if you are uh, if you say biscuits and gravy, Casley's Kitchen, the whole okay. wall over on Tremainsville. All right. Um, that's where you're going to go for your spree. So it just depends on what they like. So okay. Go around to different places. Um, but boy, I mean, if you had, you know, the zoo, this, we have one of the top 10 zoos in the yes, nation. Yes, we do. It's incredible. We have a great zoo. So you say, hey, um, you know, may not want to make the whole, you know, if, if you got, if you want to do a lot that day, maybe don't spend the whole day there. Um, go see a few of the animals, stick to one side, you know, stick to the polar bears and all that on the one side, um, Africa and all that. Um, let's see, going around, you go to, you go to downtown. Um, yeah, let's, let's say if you were going to spend your afternoon and evening here in downtown Toledo. Yeah. Uh, I would, what I would recommend doing is definitely getting the, um, the, uh, uh, Toledo pub crawl. What's the what's the um, the pedal pub? Yeah, the pedal blank, pub. Yes, I yes. I was on the maiden voyage. You of were that, of that, nice. That way back in October. That was one of the first videos I ever did. Um, but Tom owns that. And what is the name of the? Why am I blanking on it? Um, I'm, I feel I feel ashamed. I'm, I'm blank. I feel like if you Google Toledo and Pub Cycle, yes. I bet you it would yes. come up. Well, they they have the Toledo <laughs> Pub Cycle. That's yeah. one company. And then but this was. They were the ones that came second. Not to say that they're left. Sure. Um, oh boy. Yeah, I'm blanking on it. But that's. But yes, that's the. That's the name of the. That's definitely get that. Go hit up. You'll hit up. They'll take you out of three different bars. Nice. Right? Okay. But in the what is it? The handlebar. Thank yes, you, Tiernan. Thank you, Tiernan, our our uh, yes. co-producer and videographer, oh, coming in yes. clutch with that answer. The thank you so bar. much. The handlebar. The handlebar, Toledo. One hundred percent. Um, we have so many modes of transportation to get you around. Um, those scooters, I freaking love those. They're things. amazing. I love. They're so much fun. Hopping <laughs> on one of those and just cruising around. Um, so yeah, you know, by chance, if there's a mud ends game or a walleye game, definitely to go see because we really have a great hold of uh, minor league sports here in, in the area. Um, yes, we do. It is such a fun experience to go to a Mudheads game or to go to a walleye game. Um, but there are so many great bars that you can go to, you just, all within walking distance. Yes, you know, yes around, they are. Around the ballpark. Uh, Fire Flights later, if you want to go for some fancy cocktails, it's a great place to go. Um, if you want to uh, have some great food at Dirty Bird, Dirty Bird is up in the running for Tastiest in Town for having best wings. Um, yeah. That's, uh, they, they have really, yes. really good wings yeah, there. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, but you know, Table 44, Blarney. Uh, now we've got um, what's the new one that's also owned by Table 44? It's just down the way there, down the. Oh, with slope. with the with the boozy shakes. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Oh no 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 no. That's Coops. That's a, yes, Coops. Coops is great. Yeah. Now we have Ernest Brew Works down here. Yeah. So you have all that stuff right there. But up by the Blarney, next to Amasteria, uh, it kind of goes down a little bit, and I'm blanking on the name of that bar now. Um, but again, there's just so many bars in the area you go uptown you go over to manhattan's yeah. you go to uh, the attic um take them around to uh to just places i mean we have more restaurants per oh, capita so many restaurants and so uh, and, and all local yeah you know you know you don't have to go to applebee's or, no it's very or, easy know. to skip chain restaurants here oh, because yeah. of the number of really there solid are, local places yes. that we have and just and it's like whatever like you know, some people say, well, what's what's the best restaurant you to go to? You can't do that. Tell me what food you like. Yeah, you know, that's what so you, true. What do you want? Well, I want a really good, I want a good Reuben. Frog down Johnny's, that's where you want to go. <laughs> um, it's, you know, and, and everybody has their opinions. Of, of that's so best, true. But, that's but so uh, true. But it's, but that's been one of my, you know, that's been one of my endeavors to find out. Uh, where, where are the tastiest, the, best things? Absolutely. Tastiest in town. We're about to launch, uh, we just finished up Mediterranean. So nice. we had judges, you know, we have judges that vote on these things. And so I, I get to step away from them. I don't have to be, so nobody can get mad at me. That's great. I had somebody the <laughs> other day, the other day, it was just yesterday, he's, he goes, hey, guy in the 409, he goes, grape leaf, 
That Great Blue Diner really has the best Mediterranean. And I said, hey, I didn't vote. Right. They have the, great the, the Mediterranean. The people voted. The, 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 our judges voted. Our judges, our, okay. Our, the people nominate, right? So okay. So based on the number of nominations, that's how we choose the top four. But if the restaurant doesn't want to do it, well, there's no way I can, I can't force them to do sure, it. Sure, so, sure. So uh, I, I go with the top four that want to participate. And nice. for the most part, most restaurants want to do that. But we, we just filmed Wings, so yeah, we'll we'll do all the you know you'll see all that coming out. And then Very we got cool. Pizza coming out. And it's just fun. It's like finding out who's got the tastiest in town. It's awesome. a great time. Awesome. <laughs> well, Pat, you are awesome. You, you your are energy. Awesome, thank actually. you. Your energy is so positive, and it's it's no wonder to me that that you are so good at doing this because. I mean, I, I see you, you're one of those people that I see and, and I'm like, oh, I have to smile. Like you just, <laughs> you just, you definitely encourage that. And I love what you do. Please keep doing it. You're, I will. You are, you are a fighter and, and very, very driven. I mean, I think that it speaks to what you've been through and where you are now. So that's awesome. Yeah. So if you will, please look at this camera and tell Got people it. where they can find you on social media and okay. your episode is going to drop um, mid July. I believe. Okay. Does that sound about right? Yep, mid-July. So if, if there's anything coming up in July that yeah. you specifically like to rep, the floor is yours. Okay. Hey, I'm Pat McCarty, Guy in the 419. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, and, uh, or you can visit my website, guyinthe419.com. See all the upcoming events that are taking place in the area. Uh, this is what, what it, the July is pizza month. July, we're, we're, we're exploring all the great pizza places, but you can experience all of them firsthand at Pizza Palooza, which is taking place the weekend of July 22nd out at Centennial Terrace. You'll see me up there emceeing as well as some great bands, 10 different pizza vendors. It's going to be a great time, so make sure you stop on out at Centennial Terrace that weekend. Awesome. Pat McCarty, everybody, thank you so much for listening and watching however you are choosing to experience this today. Please, if you aren't already following us on social media, on both Instagram and Facebook, you can find us at Heart of Glass The Pod. We're also on YouTube, so please hit that subscribe button if you're watching us this way. And right now, you can also find us on Spotify. Thank you so much for continuing to go on this journey with us and to continue to learn a little bit more and go in depth with another one of our awesome humans who makes up the heart of the Glass City. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. And the next thing you know, 11 years has gone by here. She's my fiance, and um, she has saved my life because she was a decision that I made. Love is a choice, and so yeah. it's going out every night. There's choices that we make as we get older, and I knew that... Um, That's a really good way to look at it, actually. I, I couldn't be out there and be with... You, you can't do both. You mm -hmm. can be both together That's if you're true. out there, but still, you take the energy from that you bring it home with you and mm -hmm. everything. So when, I, when we moved in together, I, I, when I put... I had a sweet place in uh, South Toledo, you know, a great rock and roll bachelor pad. Yeah. We, we wrote yes, our song there. Yes. You know, and giving up that freedom, if you will, to coexist with somebody that you want to. That was um, kind of the turning point.